G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Moore Art School and the Learn to Paint Club. December now, so Merry Christmas to you. And uh, today we're going to continue on in our theme of little cottages in, uh, in the Australian bush. And again, uh, the subject we're going to do today is from the same as the last uh, cottage that we did, uh, which is, it was either Safala or Hills End. They're two towns that are very similar in New South Wales and um, some beautiful old world cottages there and so I took this photo and it's an unusual angle from the side a little bit like the last one we did um, with a nice winding sort of road and down the uh, down the track there and some bush and, and we might have some mountains and things in like that and I'll just switch this around a little bit of water just to loosen up the hairs there and uh, as we always do we we'll take some of the blue we'll take some red add a bit of water to that just to loosen that paint you know get it nice and loose for the purpose of the uh, drawing you don't want thick paint with your drawing there we go so it's sort of ink like consistency now the important thing here is placing the cottage in the right place and then we can get the trees and the path and everything around around that so the top of the uh, cottage is just the roof of the cottage is around about halfway uh, sorry just above the halfway mark it's kind of there and uh, it kind of I think maybe I need to make it there and it slopes down to about there it's a chimney in the way there uh, that slope there so it's going to be a roof there and then it runs out there another piece of roof and back up there and then that runs to there and I'm going to do this loosely because um, you don't really see the bottom of the of this uh, cottage so much in fact a lot of it is covered so in here for instance we've got this chimney that runs in like so actually that needs to be more over here so I'll put the chimney there because that runs up to there means that that point there needs to come out further so it's just a matter there's a little bit of a tricky drawing this one but it's a matter of just feeling your way through it so it's going to be a bit there that's going to come out to there there's another side of that chimney there and we've got that we've got the top of the chimney there we'll come down to there They're quite beautiful chimneys that's why i sort of took the photo as these chimneys were quite spectacular um, and that, that's running away that way and you've got another chimney over here but we only see that much of that other chimney okay the reason is because bushes are in the way of it and and that was part of the appeal of this painting was um was the fact that you're getting little sneaky views of parts of the chimneys there and parts of the house and the roof line and so on and the rest of it's sort of covered in bushes so that's all we're going to do with this cottage there's a window there okay there's going to be a window along the back there which is only partly in view so you can see it's a it's a fairly obscured drawing surrounded by lots of trees and so on so let's just have a play around with the trees I, I think I might introduce a mountain range in here it doesn't exist in the photo but I think it might make it a nice sort of contrast because we'll have this nice warm roof here and some dark shadows and then this cooler mountain range in the background but what what does exist though is this tree line that runs sort of through here and maybe there's one that pokes up over the mountain range there And then there's a big tree in front of that chimney. I'm just going to come down to there. There's another big tree in front of that chimney. It's going to come down to about there. And there is a big tree that is going to fill this space in here. And it's going to partly a lot of darks in, in this from this big tree which is 
adds to the to the composition, I think. So we'll run that dark all in through there. Okay, that completes step one. So now we're gonna move on to step two. We're gonna block in, I, I'm gonna leave the cottage to last. So I'm gonna block in everything that's not the cottage um, in step two. And then in step three, most of what we'll do will be focused in on getting this cottage right. So uh, I think it makes sort of sense for us to get in our darkest darks, this big tree here and here, around the base of the cottage, these trees here, and then we'll work backwards from there, I believe. So let us get underway with that. Our darkest dark, we're gonna use a big brush. So I'll use my big flat brush here. And uh, we're gonna take probably all this blue and red and mix that together. Okay, a little bit more red. Touch of water, not too much. Just touch of water just to get the paint to flow just that little bit better. And then I'm gonna just scrub this paint on. Okay, now I should point out the canvas that I'm using to 16 by 20 and um, I didn't have any fresh canvases, so I used a gesso, and you might say that there's a fairly rough texture in there. I just got a big brush with some gesso, and I just layered it on to cover the, an old painting that was already there. Um, and so it's a, a bit of a rough texture. So if you see that come through in anything that I do, don't worry about it. It's just because of the way I prepared the canvas, and you could choose to do the same, or not worry about the sort of rough texture of it at all. Now, getting that nice foreground shadow in, you can see I'm not using great brush technique, I'm just scrubbing here. But getting a nice big foreground shadow and framing up this side with nice big shadow, that creates like a frame for the eye to step beyond into the lighter areas. And I think that'll work well as a composition. Okay, so we'll just scrub that in there. A little bit more red, perhaps. As we go a bit higher up towards the sun. So yeah, because I did apply gesso, this paint is not taking fully to the surface just yet. It will once we get going, it'll be fine. Um, that first initial coat though is gonna just not quite take as well as we'd like because this next row has to be just that little bit lighter. So I'm just taking it in a small amount of white now, mixing into that pile. And I'm gonna get just a touch bluer. It's a little bit warm. And let's now fashion this one in. So this is a row of trees behind that one that we just did. Notice I'm not doing this neatly. No, I think that's a real important key to this, is to paint loosely um, and don't be up tight and rigid with your painting. Okay, so now let's get into that mountain range. We're gonna go a bit more white, not that much, about that much. We're gonna go a bit bluer. We still want some red in there. So we get a little pinch of red and not quite light enough. So there's got to be a contrast now between the back row of trees and the mountain. The mountain's got to sit behind that. And the only way that's going to happen is if we make it cooler. So more blue than what we've got in this row of trees. And we need to make it lighter. So, um, so I'm going to add more blue into there. And that's probably going to work a bit better. Especially when I have put some um, there's not a huge jump here at the moment, but when I warm up some highlights on these, that row of trees at the back, I think this blue in the mountains will work well. Okay. Don't go for perfect neat edges along the top of this mountain range either, because they really have um, you know, if they're, if they're reasonably close to us, then you're not going to have perfect edges on them. Perfect straight lines, what I mean. Yeah, 
there's a nice sort of earthy tone. Now we're going to paint green grass over this earthy tone, so don't worry if that doesn't look like what you think it should look like. This is just blocking in the undertone. Because a bit of green grass and so on around the edges here. sure about that shape of that path there yet but I'll just go with what I've got there for the moment And then that just leaves the path. So what we'll do with the path, we'll just add white. We'll make it lighter and redder. So, you know, it's a dirt road. We want to sort of paint it in an old sort of look and feel. So that dirt road's going to run through there. I don't know what we'll do with that. But for the moment, I'll just pop that there. Careful we don't paint out the shadows. You can always strengthen them back up, of course. Just darken it up a little bit as it comes closer to us, so it should be lightest further away. that shadow a little bit there stand back and have a look and yeah I'm pretty happy with the way that's all working it's got a nice sense of depth the cottage is sort of popping out and it's going to be most of that light tone anyway so it's already giving us a sense of how it's going to look and feel in the landscape there. Got this nice winding path, we've got these distant trees, the nice mountain. It, it's all working pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with all of that. Um, time to let it dry. So that sort of brings us to the end of step two. We need to let this dry off, give it an hour or so. You want it bone dry. You don't want it to be tacky or sticky. You know, with, I think with acrylics, as they as it um, starts to dry it becomes tacky and if you're trying to work over tacky paint it doesn't work it either has to be wet so you can work into it or it has to be bone dry is what I've found so that's why I do it in these steps you know step one the drawing which we've done step two we block in an undertone and our shadow colors um, and then we let it dry bone dry we come back with step three and then we start to pull the paint together with our details highlights finishing touches center of interest, all of that type of thing. So I'm gonna go and have a break. I'm gonna let this dry off and I'll see you after the break and uh, we'll turn this into a great little painting of a nice little cottage, either in Safala or in Hills End in New South Wales. I can't remember which town it was, but it's a great little painting. I'll see you after the break. Okay, welcome back. This is step three now. This is a good chance to dry off and it's looking good. So we'll just start doing some work around the cottage and then we'll expand out from there. So. Grab a few colours here. Okay, so I've just put out fresh paint. I've got our ultramarine blue, lizard crimson, yellow ochre, and titanium white. So we'll start off with the roof of this cottage here. We'll just get some of that established. So it's corrugated iron. It's mostly white with a 
tint of blue to it. And then there's some rust and so on on it. So I'll just load up some paint there using my flat brush. And then, you know, being a little bit careful here, I'll just establish the shape of it here. Working around those chimneys. It's going to run out to about there. And then it's going to run out there. Like so, now I'll put some rust and things on there shortly. Now what we need to do is just get some shadow tone because this wall here and here is in shadow and we'll just use a little bit of blue and red into that mix. I'll just go a little bit cooler so I'll touch more of the blue and we want this to be lighter in value than the shadows and the trees. Okay so just sort of soft mauvey Shadow tone, and I think, yeah, that's right. It does come down in there. I'll put a bush there, but I'll just get the wall in. There's a chimney there, so we're not going to see any of that really there. And then we've got this back section in here. That runs in through there. And we'll push the grass up along the bottom there of this wall. So just getting in some tone like so. Now at this point it might be appropriate. I'll just take another thin small brush and I'll just mix up a darker version of that. Like so. And I'll just run Run that in there and there, just under the eaves. A bit of an indication for a window. So the rust is it's going to be the white with blue and crimson yellow ochre. Like so. And then we can just run, you know, it runs along the lines of the sheet of corrugated iron generally. Run some sections of it down like so. So just a few little indications of it there. We'll add some darks in, and we've got our um, we've got our chimneys to come in here now. So let's get the chimneys in. There's there's a fair bit of dark in the chimney in parts. So let's just go over dark mix like so. So blue and red basically, and um, Let's just work the dark sides in for the moment. They're beautiful old chimneys, and I think that's what drew me to wanting to photo it and uh, and to paint it. Ultimately, it's just the shape of them, and a little bit of red getting in there, which is good. Get that red brick feel to them. Okay, the next one here. So hopefully you can see through these episodes, and those of you who are a member of the Bologna Paint Club, you get to see the, the full edition, that hopefully what you're picking up is that learning to paint, you know, it's following steps that lead you to an outcome. Once you master those steps, like we're currently doing step three of the Moore Method, which is, you know, what I focus on is the blocking, uh, sorry, the details, finishing touches, and highlights in this step. Once you master each of those steps, painting becomes, I won't say it becomes easy, <laughs> because it's never easy, but it becomes you know, more joyful. 
So now we need to get the highlight side of these chimneys. So we'll go over lighter red. Get a touch on the pink side, which is why I'll add the yellow to give it a little bit more of an orange tinge. And lighten that up again. And let's just run that down. Now I've got too much paint on the brush, see that? So I'll just pause and I'll pull that paint out and I'll just load the tip of that brush, which will give me a better result. Run it down this side. Remember the light's coming from up here. Down that face there. And that starts to you know, bring in that three-dimensional element. And we'll add a little bit of highlight to this back row of trees here. I want to keep it subdued so we'll go a little bit of blue a fair bit of white and a bit of this yellow ochre here we'll just see what that mix gives us it's not bad i'll get a pinhead of red just to gray it a little probably once i'll touch more white in there maybe it doesn't it's going a bit a bit sickly so a bit more blue in there and a touch more yellow Let's see what that happens. Now, whenever I do highlights, I always like to make sure I've got not so much paint on the brush, okay? So I pull the paint out and then just load the tip. Light's coming from that direction. So that means that our highlights are going to be very lightly placed. And I do mean lightly, hardly any paint on the brush. Because this is in the background, remember? We don't want these trees jumping out. We don't want them competing with the house and they're just part of the scene. Notice I'm only highlighting the side that's gonna be getting the sun. Leaving plenty of that shadow there. This tree here, a little bit more tricky. I mean, it's, there's a few different ways we can approach it. I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. So I'll just add a little bit more of the yellow, two yellows in there, a the little pinhead of the red. Okay. Let's just push this around in the upper areas and see what we think. I stress this make sure you aim to keep plenty of the shadow in there so as we come down I'm going to mix up a more of a mid mid green by adding a bit more of that blue in there so that's a much darker green which we can just lightly work that in because the lower parts here aren't going to get as much light, obviously. Take another chunk of that blue, yellow, get a bit of white in there. It's more yellow. I'll get a bit of the yellow ochre as well. Okay, and so let's just run some of this in as grass. A little bit more yellow, a little bit more white. And I'm going to you know, let, leave some of that earth tone to poke through. Because that green 
will harmonize against the earthy red orange tone. Okay. And there will be patches of dirt and things showing through. There's no doubt about that at all. So you can see how simply this painting is coming together now that we've, we've got everything established pretty much. It's now just a matter of just tying different elements together. Well, folks, I think we've got there. Um, it's a little cottage in Safala or Hills End, New South Wales. Um, it's a very loose approach, the way we've painted it, but I think it gives us a fresh sort of feel. And, and hopefully you can see how the the cottage there is really popping out because of this shadow foreground up this big tree with all this shadow tone in the back here, cool shadow tone. And this is this warm um, light tone that you know I think is popping out and um, becomes the center of interest there. So as I said, it's quite a loose approach the way I painted it. Um, you can see big brush marks and, and you can see the way I was scrubbing the brush without really being too tight and too rigid. Because I want you to get that sort of feel of uh, loosening up a little bit and um, enjoying your painting without being too rigid and controlled with it. You know, you've got to allow it to be an expression of your own emotions and feelings. And I think if you're too controlled and you're too uptight about how you go about it, then you lose that little bit of creative artistic flair. So have a go at this and maybe do two versions. Do one nice and loose like I've just demonstrated and then try and do one where you're copying every detail exact and compare the two and see which one you like after that. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Learn to Paint TV. I, I certainly have. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Make sure you drop by our website, www.learntopaint.tv. And if you'd like to see the full episode, join our Learn to Paint Club. Um, you can take a $1 uh, trial of the Learn to Paint Club and you can get access to the full episodes of every episode we've done. So until next time, happy painting. Cheers for now.